Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the NABE News Update. It's Friday, April 3rd. Many of the stories you'll hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The Montana Legislature turned away a proposed referendum that, if enacted by voters, would have given people grounds to disobey any state laws that violated their religion. Crow Tribal Member Democratic Representative Carolyn Pease Lopez said there are nine hate groups in Montana and the bill would have stopped just short of allowing them to kill her. American Indians are the walking dead because of how they're treated by people who discriminate, Pease Lopez said, and now we're going to license it, we're going to elevate it. After a heated floor debate, state representatives failed to pass House Bill 615 on a 50-50 vote. The bill resembles a recent Indiana law that allows open discrimination for the sake of religious freedom. Opponents said the bill language was so vague that it would have allowed any business, church, or individual to openly discriminate and violate laws. Supporters said the measure would have brought to the state level a 1993 federal law aimed at preventing legislation that substantially burdens a person's right to exercise religion. Utah lawmakers and educators have set out a path to improve education for Native American students across the state. Governor Gary Herbert signed a bill into law that brings state and tribal leaders together to hash out a plan over the next year. Native American students represent the worst achievement gap of any minority group in Utah. They score 20% lower than the rest of the state in language arts, 23% lower in math, and 29% in science. House Bill 33 establishes a commission comprised of education officials, representatives from the eight tribes in Utah, and members of the legislature to identify solutions. The commission is expected to make a recommendation to the legislature at the end of the year before disbanding. The U.S. Department of the Interior announces that the Cobell Education Scholarship Fund has grown to $17 million with a transfer of an additional $12 million. The scholarship fund was authorized by the Cobell Settlement and is funded in part by the Land Buyback Program for Tribal Nations. The fund provides scholarships for Native American and Alaska Native students pursuing post-secondary and graduate education training. Utah's Native American heritage was recognized with the dedication of a permanent memorial that pays homage to the tribes who once called the land home. State officials and Utah tribal leaders officially dedicated the Galena Sun Sundial Monument. Located along the Jordan River Parkway Trail, the site is part of Galena Sukani Preserve, a 250-acre site designed to protect wetlands as well as wildlife and conserve the area's cultural heritage. The site was created over the past two years in partnership with the state's eight Native American tribes and the Utah Division of Indian Affairs. The monument, which acts as a natural sundial, is part of an ongoing effort to conserve and recognize cultural landmarks near rail lines and bus routes. Lori Watso, Secretary and Treasurer of the Shakopee Mdewakanton Sioux Communities Tribal Government, believes personal wellness leads to community wellness. Recently, the Shakopee Mdewakanton Sioux Community has taken steps to build up that nutritional foundation for Native American communities nationwide by partnering with First Nations Development Institute, the Nota Big A the Third Foundation, and the University of Minnesota to launch a new campaign, Seeds of Native Health. The Shakopee Mdewakanton Sioux Community gave a $5 million donation to the Seeds of Native Health campaign. From that total, the First Nations Development Institute is receiving $1.4 million to fund projects increasing food access, infrastructure, and independence. Another $1.1 million is going to the Nota Big A the Third Foundation to promote wellness in children. Meanwhile, the University of Minnesota will handle the educational aspect of the project, partnering for a new series of conferences on nutrition and sharing applicable research and best practices for Native communities. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.